Did you know that on the cliffhanger map in Halo Infinite, you can find this? Now, I don't know who drew Master Chief as a pigeon, but I'd like to imagine it was a disgruntled elite sick and tired of being beaten by the Chief. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Video Game Easter Eggs, the series where we cover some of the best Easter eggs found in video games. As always, if you think you know of a video game Easter egg that I'm yet to cover, then let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to check it out. Oh, and a big thank you to my YouTube members and patrons for their awesome support. And without further delay, Let's get started. Right, let's once again begin a video with mobile platformer Super Bear Adventure. Now, we've covered loads of Super Bear Easter eggs in recent episodes of this series, but today's Easter egg might just be my favourite. If you jump into the toilet on the giant house level, you'll end up in the sewers where you can find a very well hidden tunnel that's hiding some familiar faces. So this is of course a reference to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now I'm pretty sure that I've covered all of the easter eggs in Super Bear Adventure, but I'm more than happy to be proved wrong, so if you think I've missed something then please let me know. Oh and before we move on, I just want to briefly revisit a game that we covered in the last episode of this series. In that video I shared a couple of easter eggs from retro inspired first person shooter Forgive Me Father. Well, loads of you pointed out that one of the zombies killed in the background footage of the game looked familiar. Many of you believe that this zombie is a reference to Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil Village, and if I'm honest, I do see the resemblance. Still, I'll let you guys be the judge. Is this a reference to the massive vampire woman Lady Dimitrescu, or is it just a coincidence? Let me know in the comments. Next up is the hugely underrated Hunt Showdown. Now, we last covered Hunt Showdown all the way back in episode 55 of this series, where, among other things, we discovered a zombified Bob Ross mid-painting, along with a message written in invisible ink that politely asked you to hit the subscribe button. And let's face it, you don't want to let Bob Ross down. Well, today's Hunt Showdown easter egg can be found on the DeSalle map. In the toilets next to the Shrek's house easter egg, you can find this. Yep, that's right, you can find nothing. Well, if you activate Darkseid, then the face of Hunt Showdown lighting artist Andrew Johnson can be seen. It's a really cool easter egg, and it wouldn't surprise me if more of the devs' faces can be found on Hunt Showdown's other maps. Up next is the reference-packed Asterix and Obelix XXL2. Now, XXL2 is so reference-packed that I'm not going to list every single easter egg that i found in the game so far. Instead, you are. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different easter eggs and references from XXL2, and all you have to do is name them. The person who names the most references correctly and also receives the most likes on their comment will have their answer pinned in the comments section. So here are the easter eggs and good luck. Next up is another game that is full of easter eggs. Jazz Punk has become somewhat of a regular in this series due to its willingness to reference just about anything and anyone. For example, the first of today's Jazz Punk easter eggs can be seen when trying to help a frog cross the road.
I mean, this easter egg is pretty obvious, but if you're still unsure, this is a reference to the classic arcade game Frogger. The next jazz punk easter egg can be found in any of the hotel bathrooms. So instead of finding toilet paper, you instead find three seashells. This is a reference to the excellent Sylvester Stallone movie Demolition Man, where toilet paper has been replaced by three seashells. And to this day, I still have no idea how that was supposed to work. I'm happy that you're happy, but the place where you're supposed to have the toilet paper, you got this little shelf with three seashells on it. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> The final jazz punk easter egg is a reference to a movie scene that gets referenced all the time. In fact, it was even referenced in the last episode of this series. On the holiday resort level, you can find this. So this man trapped in carbonite is of course a reference to the time that Han Solo suffered the same fate in Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Oh, and I love how the jazz punk devs have made sure they can't be sued by declaring it's a public domain man in carbonite. Right, let's end today's video with the excellent Dead Island 2. Now, in the last episode in this series, I said that I was disappointed with the Easter eggs, or lack thereof, in Dead Island 2. And whilst that hasn't really changed, there are a couple more cool easter eggs that I missed. The first of these discoveries can be found in the description of one of Dead Island 2's many weapons. Each item in Dead Island 2 has a unique description that tells you about the things that you're carrying around with you. For example, the description of the crowbar reads, whether dealing with an alien invasion or the zompocalypse, a crowbar never lets you down. Facts. This is a reference to Half-Life, which famously saw you begin the game with a crowbar as aliens invaded Earth. The next Dead Island 2 easter egg can be found at Venice Beach. On the security gates of the quarantine zone, you can find this. So written on the gate is the word Red Rum, but if you read that word backwards, it says murder. This is a reference to this scene from the Stanley Kubrick movie, The Shining. So some of the strongest zombies that you can face in Dead Island 2 are the Crushers. These hulking members of the undead family can deal massive damage if you aren't careful. Now there are multiple different versions of the Crusher, but there is one in particular that we're interested in. So if I asked you who this Crusher looked like, what would you say? Well, I, and plenty others, believe that this particular crusher is a reference to Guile from the Street Fighter series. Now, this may seem vague, but the spiked up hair and military clothing make this huge zombie look just like him. What do you think? So the final Dead Island 2 easter egg actually contains spoilers for the story of Dead Island 2. So if you want to avoid knowing what happens after about three to four hours of playtime, then stop watching now. Okay, so in the last episode of this series, we found a grave for Sam the dog. I speculated that this could be a reference to a developer's dog who had passed away. However, I was immediately made to feel very stupid when loads of you commented that the dog actually belonged to Emma. You can even find Sam's collar in Emma's bedroom. Well, it turns out that this isn't the only gravestone that can be found here. After Michael's death in the story, you can find this. So after poor Michael's demise, his gravestone can be found next to Sam's. 